Like an old dusty road I get weary from the load Moving on Moving on Like this tired troubled earth I've been rolling since my birth Moving on Moving on There's a place in the sun Where there's hope for everyone And my poor restless heart's gotta run Yeah, there's a place in the sun And before my life is done Gotta You know, when times are bad and, you know, when you're feeling sad, I want you all to know that there is a place in the sun just for you. Whoa, there's a place in the sun where there's hope for everyone and my poor restless heart's got a Bring this back later, okay? Can you go backwards if when we want to go back there easily? Good, because I have a whole talk on that thing. I just, I, was that up before? I don't remember it before. Well, I've got a whole talk. It's just about that, about that whole thing. Well, I'll just do it now. Bring back the thing. How many of you can identify with that? You go and you go and you go and you go and you haven't gone very far. You try and you try and you try and you try and you've accomplished not much. Now here's the deal. And this is mysticism from Emma Curtis Hopkins because she interprets everything in the Bible, every story as being significant. She says it's all significant. Don't pass over anything. You will miss good parts. And so there was a time when Jesus was talking to people on one side of the Sea of Galilee and, and he had to go away because they were like needy. How many of you have ever wanted to escape? <laughs> well, the, he was there. It's like, I need a break. But instead of going around the, the, the northern part, and I've been to the Sea of Galilee, he he had, would have had to go around quite a bit. Instead, he and his disciples, well, his disciples went across and he kind of walked and met up with them later. But anyway, that's an, I don't know if he really did. But, I, but the whole story is when you are, when you are, when you take the Christ with you, and Christ is always with you because it is the presence of God with you, but when you're conscious of it, when you're conscious of that presence, you don't have to go through the whole rigmarole. There can be instantaneous healings. There can be, there can be transformations that are quick and, and, and easier than walking over and around and through 
you just get there. I just want to say that because I know I've done this myself. And when I finally, when, so I, I have a confession. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kathy Ann and I wor overwork things. <laughs> Instead of overworking things, when I finally just let it go and say, I'm, I, I really need some help here. We cross the gap. Just keep that in mind, my dears. Keep that in mind. So now we can go back to the really pretty one. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Patrick, for finding these beautiful symbols of uh, uh, gay pride uh, cathedrals. <laughs> it's so wonderful. It's so wonderful. The talk today is take pride in the way that the universe shows up as you. See, there's just a little bit of a switch here because a lot of us want to take pride in who we are and we're kind of convinced ourselves. But if we were raised, and all of us were raised in a culture where you had to prove yourself, uh, weren't we? I mean, anybody just, you know, born on some other planet and transported? Wasn't that, what was that guy, what was that, that book? No, not Superman. <laughs> <sighs> stranger in a strange land. Unless you are a stranger in a strange land, we were born in a culture where you have to prove yourself, where you have to fit in, where you have to get the approval of others. And therefore, if you don't have the approval of others and you haven't achieved what society said you were to achieve or your family said you were to achieve. For instance, when I was going through high school, if you weren't engaged by 19, you were a failure. I'm sorry. And that was only 20 years ago. <laughs> oh, man. So since I didn't make it at, at, at 19, I overachieved and got married five times. Come on. I had to make up for that failure. But it's all, see, it's all the stuff, you know? We're not, we weren't raised like the Dalai Lama who from a very early age was told he was the incarnation of compassion. <laughs> or Jesus, you're the son of God, you're the son. I'm just, now isn't it interesting we can say that about the Dalai Lama and I laugh about Jesus, but really Mary thought he was divine. And he, in, he in, embodied it. But we don't raise our children that way. Well, you do because you're so enlightened, but I wasn't raised that way. So to take, so there's one thing to take pride in who we are, but there's another thing to even up at a level and take, take pride in what the universe is as us, through us, for others. To take pride in the way the universe wants to show up in us. And if the universe is love, it wants to show up in us as love. It wants to show up in us as, now here, get this, just take it in, magnificence magnificence so what you do you do magnificently even if you fail it is just beyond you know it's like uh, to truly honor the way that you're put together because nobody else is put together that way and you have a gift and a talent that only you're going to bring to the grand scheme of things. And by owning that, by owning that magnificence, that I am worthiness, I am lovableness, I am loving myselfness, you start to shift not only your future, but your family's future and the, and, the, and the future that we get to have collectively. Because we're all emitting something. We emit our, our normal vibration, our normal thought about ourselves. We're emitting it out. How many of you have been around people that you're around them and, and you either feel better about yourself or, or lesser about yourself and they don't say a thing? They're just boom, boom, boom. My, I, everyone felt good, better around my grandmother. Everyone. Everyone. 
People just couldn't stop talking about how much they loved my grandmother. Uh, three of my cousins named their children after my grandmother. I, on the other hand, like my papa, and I named my rabbit after him. So uh, <laughs> he was just misunderstood. But, how, you know, and then there were other people that I, I always felt worse around because they boom, 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 boom. I had this, this, so this, this epiphany for service because I tried things out on people and I kept, I'm keeping some ideas and magnifying others. But the, but the thing that occurred to me is that I would love this place to be the boom, 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 boom of love. So let me tell you a story. And it's a perfect story for the, the month of June, where we really take pride in people taking pride in themselves. And yet there was a time when people didn't take pride in themselves. I mean, it was just a budding thing. I'd been around long enough t- when it was just new, new. So I came to Seattle and to this church in uh, 1988. I know, you're surprised. And I was a 12-year-old minister. (laughs) I say that because I just read that some young man graduated from college with five degrees at the age of 12. So, you know, there's always prodigies. I came and I came so in 1988 and then so the last part of the 80s and the first part of the 90s we were having an epidemic in the United States and the epidemic was AIDS and it was so scary because people didn't know enough about it and it was even hard to research and people were shunning people so imagine you get it and then everyone's shunning you how hard must that be and how hard must must that be because they really didn't understand exactly what was, how it was transmitted and should I touch you and is it by the air? I mean, they just didn't do the research yet. And so there was this huge amount of shame and blame and, and fear and hesitancy and withdrawal. And a lot of young men showed up at the Center for Spiritual... Well, it wasn't the Center for Spiritual Living then. It was the Church of Religious Science. And I love that name. We gave it up because people kept... Is it Scientology? No. Is it science? Is it Christian science? No. So we had spent so much time saying what we weren't, we couldn't say what we were. So we changed the name to, we're just a center. And we do a lot of spiritual living. Okay, I got it. But anyway, back at the Church of Religious Science, a lot of young men were showing up because the Christian churches hadn't quite caught up. (laughs) I mean, you know, it it takes a while. And we were one of the first to say, y'all come. Y'all come. And... I remember one summer where I lost so many friends. I called it the the summer of the lost friends. And so I got it just I just couldn't stand it anymore. So I started a group in a room about the size of this, you know, just not a very big room and people crowded in and we called it Beyond AIDS. Because we weren't there to do anything except, and they were the ones doing it. Young men and myself and whoever else wanted to show up were there to contemplate what it would be when we went beyond an AIDS epidemic because it was so hard to see the end when they're in the middle of it. Do you see how courageous that was on their part? How courageous it is for any of you to be in the middle of it and yet know that there is something beyond that. Because too many of us stop with what we're in. And we can't get beyond it. And yet there's always a beyond. Whether it's in this lifetime or, or, or more. Because life is eternal. Life is eternal and there's always a good unfolding. Waiting to unfold. 
So we, you know, we just did it for years, meeting once a week, beyond dates. People would talk. They'd be loving each other. A lot of love was generated, a lot of well-being, and a lot of miracles. The first to get trial drugs, the David Wood would say, he's, he's at Genesis now, he would say that group saved his life. Because he no longer has AIDS, period. End of sentence. Not there, not in control. Done. I would like this center to have that kind of consciousness. And when we come together, if we come together once a week or you watch online, thank you for joining us, that we also generate something, and that is beyond hate beyond division, beyond pointing fingers, beyond seeing how people are different and magnifying that instead of seeing how people are the same and magnifying that because what's the same in us? Beyond our wonderful, unique, quirky personalities is the presence of God lives within everybody. Yes. And to come from that place, to come from that place, and to, and, to, and to be the place that goes woo 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 and becomes a heartbeat for not only Seattle, because a lot of loves happen in Seattle. God bless Seattle. A lot of love. You may not know, but maybe it was because of that. I mean, I don't know why. Honestly, I don't know why. But 11 years ago, I got a call while I was uh, in between services. We were in this old sanctuary, and I, I just had to share, like, the second service. Guess what? I just got a call, and Center for Spiritual Living has been asked to be the Grand Marshal of the Gay Pride Parade. And it may be because of that work that we had done. I don't know. But I will say one thing. Going down that street, oh, and by the way, can I just say, not in any form of criticism, but just like we could improve this because there were three of us go representing the Center for Spiritual Living, Carol Bastenbrook, Michael Ingersoll, and myself. And they put us in a Mini Cooper <laughs> with two people up front, the three of us in the back. We were like flowing over, you know, hello. <laughs> anyway, but the love... The love, the love, the love. Such a celebration of love. Not just pride, but when you take pride in yourself, the only thing that you can emanate is love. So those people that don't emanate love, it's not, just bless them. God bless them because they don't know who they are yet. And they're still holding themselves accountable for something they probably have even forgotten what that was. Love emanates love. And there's a lot of love going on today. A lot of love going on this weekend. A lot of love going on in a lot of places this year. So how do we get to this place of self-love, this self place of self-acceptance? Well, what I know, at least I've proven to myself, is that it will be very hard to talk yourself into it. How many of you have tried to talk yourself into loving yourself? And the rational mind says, oh, here's all these reasons. And, and there's a part of you that goes, <laughs> right. <laughs> I know who you really are. Um, see, the rational mind, our rational mind is a mental process. And it must operate out of something that's already in its bank of information. It just takes information and puts together in new ways. So if we have a whole reservoir of not meeting others and our own expectations, it's going to be very hard for us to go into total self-acceptance. But the way, there is a way to do that. Just like Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee, guess what? The way is let God illuminate in you its idea of you. Let God illuminate that idea. It did happen a long time ago for me. Well, first of all, before I go on, 
Let me give the definition of illumination. Illumination is the revelation of, an, of truth, your truth. It's, it, is, it shows up in humankind as intuition, inspiration, high recognition, and a sense of belonging to the divine. It's a light bulb moment that changes things, like, like, like going across, like changes things. Not, I'm going to get in there. I'm getting there. I'm doing my affirmation. You know, uh, Louise Hay, God bless Louise Hay. She had the right idea. I went to a whole bunch of hay rides. Because, well, I did because I would go to LA a lot in the early nineties and I'd go to these hay rides and I, and it's like, we'd take these mirrors. I love myself. I love you. I love you. I love you. That's a long process. It's mental. It stayed right here. It didn't necessarily change everything, but she had the right idea. So to, 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 that's the long way around the Sea of Galilee. That's the want long and windy road. The quick line is the God line. And the God line is those light bulb moments where you realize something that is not logical and did not come from your past. How many of you have had those? And they change you, don't they? They're like, whoo, we want more of those. We want, you know, I wish I had a light bulb store. Um, metaphorically, like here, here's an illumination and have this illumination. I wish I had that. I don't, but I can tell you how to get more of them. And these are tried and true methods. These come from the spiritual teachings of so many world-class Religions, I guess they're all world class because God likes them. Anyway, um, God approved world religions. So let's just get to it. All right. Ready? Ready? Okay, great. Oh, by, oh, I want to give you an example. This, this speaks to what, what is being celebrated today. When our forefathers who really did have a connection with God, not necessarily the way that they want to be portrayed, but they had their own spiritual tradition. I believe with the, when they, when somebody got, whether it was Thomas Jefferson or whoever, got this idea and they approved it, it was, it was an illuminating moment for the, our country. And that is, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. First of all, it wasn't self-evident. It wasn't self-evident. That was a brand new idea in history, at least in Western culture. A brand new idea. And it was so weird that they wrote it down, but they couldn't even live it. How many of you have had illuminated moments that it changed everything, but it just, you just can't quite get there in your personality? Like, our whole country's that way. That it's finally moving out so that we can accept more and more and no, not accept, demand that these people are equal and must be seen equally, treated equally, and have the same opportunities. That is like in, it's in my DNA, but it was be, it, now, but it's because they had this idea. I wonder what, I bet there was conversations. Well, how do we do that? Oh, shut up. God said, it. just write it down. <laughs> Let other generations figure it out. I mean, really? The writings of Paul. How many of you have ever read the writings of Paul? He was crazy. Or... He was having the same experience. Sometimes he would write, there is no man and woman in God. All are equal in God's mind. And then he'd go, and women should cover their head and not speak. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. Now we can't make fun of that because how many of you do that? How many of you in your morning meditations know everything's going to be fine? Um, and then you get on the freeway. See, it's whoop, 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 whoop. We all have this. 
But it's because we don't understand that we can be at the very lowest place and be lifted up back into the Christ consciousness that will deliver us. Deliverance. That was a very bad movie. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. How to, how to cultivate illumination. First, seek to love, not to blame, shame, or regret. Seek to love. And it's so easy to blame. It's so easy to shame yourself. And it's so easy to regret what happened. Oh, if it had just been different, then you just oh, love it, love it, love it. Seek to love it. And I will, and, okay, I'll get this. I will go to the, I'll just go to the seventh one. Unify with God. Because, and do it daily, hourly. Let your new mantra be God as me is. So if you're blaming, shaming, or regretting, say to yourself, God as me is love. God as me is accepting. God as me is lifted up right now into the presence and the power and the glory of the infinite. See that kind of stuff? Because a lot of us, it doesn't, it doesn't take like five steps. It's like God as me is short, sweet, effective. Especially when you find yourself going into blame or shame or regret. Number two, turn those concerns, criticisms, and complaints into praise, 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 praise everything. Praise it, praise it, praise it. Praise it when you're up, praise it when you're down. Praise God for this. Praise God for that challenge. Oh, praise God this is happening. I know it sounds silly, but man, it can turn things around very quickly. You want to go the quick way across the Sea of Galilee? Start praising what you can praise. Because there will always be something that will keep you on that long and windy road because there is so much to find wrong in the world. Praise what's good. Three, listen to your heart, not your head. Learn to listen, learn to just be still because when you're listening to your heart, there's something that just sort of comes out of you. Jesus said, what comes out of you will save you. When you listen to your head, it's like you can almost see the Rolodex happening. Okay, this is happening. And it happened before this way, so we can count on this. Yep, it's going to be bad. The heart goes, the heart has possibility. Listen to your heart. Seek silence. I so don't want to use a bad word. So I'll just say it in a nice way. Shut up. We just don't shut up enough. How many of you wouldn't have a problem? You go, and you're just talking to yourself and you wear it out. Just sometimes just have this little sign. Shut up. Just shut up. It was the 11th commandment and they took it out <laughs> because it was too powerful. Pray to see as God sees. <sighs> Father, mother, God within, I do not understand why it's happening this way. Let me see as you see. Father, mother, God within, I do not understand what's happening to me. Let me see as you see. Let me see as you see. This is the practice that I use for healing my own body is that I go right into the, the well, whether it was the cancer or the tumor or whatever, and I go right in and I just appreciate it. And I say, there's only God here because God sees only God and things shift. God realized this is the straight cross. This is the, str the straight way across the Sea of Galilee to, to realize God, not think about God. All the thinking must lead to a realization. When you realize God, there must be an effect. Otherwise, we're just rehearsing what other people told us or what we told ourselves. But there's a big difference. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a crazy woman. I want us to also be a vortex for miracles and healings because that's the very foundation of our teaching. And I think we get way too intellectual way too uh, rigid with the, with the traditions of how we're supposed to do things. And the truth is consciousness is cause. 
You change your consciousness or let God change your consciousness straightway. And there will be a result. I don't know what the result will be, but it will be better than the result that you're having now. Because God is good and greater good than you can even imagine. Hallelujah. So now we've got a little opportunity and uh, Jake's coming up to help me out. So we're going to do a a funny little uh, closing prayer slash song slash involvement. And I get these funny little um, videos on social media because I have horses, so people will send me things. Anything, you know, it's like when people found out I was born in the year of the rabbit, I got all these rabbits. And now I get horse videos. Thank you very much. If you want to send me a new horse, I would accept it. Uh, But no, they don't send horses. Uh, No, I'm just, but how many of you have seen this cute little um, foal, tiny, tiny little foal. And foals will actually kind of look like little dogs. They don't, they get, they're just hop. And, and it's like this little foal is going, I'm a happy, happy guy. I am a happy, happy, happy guy. And he's got his little tail up, you know. Have you ever seen that? Is, who's seen it? I'm a happy, happy guy. I am a happy, happy, happy guy. Well, When you know that the presence and the power and the love of God resides within you, you have to burst out into joy. Why? Because joy is the most profound evidence of the presence of God within you. So if you're wondering, have I, have I connected? Have I connected? And you're still like, have I connected? Have I connected? No, you haven't. So do it again. Do it again until there's something within you that is like, I'm a happy, happy me. I am a happy, happy, happy me. I am a happy, happy me. I am a happy, happy, happy me. I am. Let's do it one more time. Well, no, they didn't get involved yet. They're semi-involved, not all involved. Because this is fun. And God should be fun. These somber things, I love them. They're good. But I think I want to take the joy path. The joy path to the most high. I'm taking the ladder up to heaven. And every single step is a joy, joy, joy. And I'm a happy, happy me. I am a happy, happy, happy me. One more. A happy, happy. Happy me. I am a happy, happy, happy me. Yay.